Sing it, the weapon may be formed. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Glory to God. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve, because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God, and my God will never fail. Sing it with me. Because I'm going to see a victory. Come on. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, church. Because I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because I'm going to see a victory. Glory to God. Our God is greater. Come on. And our God is greater. And our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. And our God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Sing it with me, church. And our God is greater. And our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. And our God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Our God is greater. And our God is greater. And our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. And our God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Sing it with me if our God is for us this morning. And if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? Come on. What could stand against? If our God, and if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? What could stand against? Oh Lord, if our God, if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? If our God is with us, what could stand against? Father God, on this morning, being past Amy, we join our faith. We lift your wonderful people up before you on this morning. Father God, we pray for them, that you would fill them with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You said, my people perish for lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. But in the book of Jeremiah chapter 23, you said, you will give your people pastors who will feed them with knowledge and understanding. Father God, as we open the Word of God on this morning, feed your people. Feed them until they are satisfied. Feed them, and feed them until their minds are renewed. Feed them until they become strengthened in God. Feed them until their entire lives are changed. Feed them until their sick bodies are healed. Feed them the word until their finances take a turn for the better, until their marriages take a turn for the better. Give them a breakthrough. Lift burdens that's on their shoulders. Honor their faith. You said without faith, it's, a, it's a, impossible to please God because whoever comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him minister to your people on this morning in the name of jesus christ we pray 
Somebody say amen. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High. How are you doing on this morning? So glad to see you and be, be with you on this, on this morning prayer broadcast as we continue the series, God is Fighting for You. And what we are talking about this morning is you have angels on assignment. You have angels on assignment. The Bible says in the, in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, he, he sent forth his angels to minister for them who are heirs of salvation. In the book of Psalms, the Bible says the angels of God encamp around those who fear him. Do you realize that we have angels living around us? Why are they there? To watch over us, to protect us, to keep us safe from harm, to keep us safe from the attacks of the enemy, even Jesus. The Bible says when he was tempted that an angel came and strengthened him. Now, you know, if Jesus needed an angel to come and strengthen him, we ain't better than Jesus. Come on, somebody. And this brings us to the book of Daniel chapter 6. Daniel was chosen. He was preferred before the other presidents. He was more favored by King Darius. And as a result of the favor and the clout and the relationship Daniel had with King Darius, the other presidents and the other folks, counselors to the king, they became jealous of Daniel and they consulted and connived and cooked up a plan on how they could get rid of Daniel. And one of the things they said, they said, you know what? We can't find no fault with this man except it be concerning his relationship with the Lord, his God. Well, I'm no different than Daniel. If you're going to hit me for my relationship with God, I'm guilty. Go on ahead. I'm a man of prayer. I'm a man of fasting. I'm a man of the word. I'm guilty. My God. And the Bible says in verse 7 of chapter 6, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, except from thee, O king, he shall be cast into the, land, into the den of lions. They were targeting Daniel. Someone's targeting you right now. You are always on the devil's hit list. Come on, somebody. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius, being naive, not realizing they, it wasn't about him at all, they were setting Daniel up, signed the writing and the decree. Watch this, y'all. Here, this is pressure tactics from the enemy. He will, bring, he will sign things into law to try to get you to go against your conviction, to try to get you to go against the word of God. But I'm not flinching. I refuse to bow. I refuse to back up. I refuse to go against the scripture. I refuse to go against the word of God. Go ahead. Pass all the laws you want, but I'm standing with God. My, my, my. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Daniel said, I'm not changing. I'm leaving my windows open. 
I, I'm guilty. You're going to have to throw me to the lions because I'm praying. I'm talking to my God. I can't live without talking to him. For in him we live and move and breathe and have our being. Without him, I'm absolutely nothing. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. I got to have him. I got to pray. I got to seek God. I, I got to have his wisdom. I ain't that smart. I got to, I got to hear from him. I need his strength. I need his direction. I need his voice in my life. I got to be led by the Holy Ghost. I got to pray. My God, you can't outlaw prayer. <laughs> prayer is a, a personal relationship between God and his people. You can't outlaw that thing. Come on, somebody. How crazy is that? Then these men assemble and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altered not. Then answered they and said before the king, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but make it his petition three times a day. Day after Daniel, day after Daniel, when you are right with God, somebody's going to hate you over it. The devil is going, just how the Holy Ghost works in your life, Satan is going to work through somebody else to attack you, to plan against you, to plot against you, to connive against you. But no weapon form against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rise against you in judgment it shall be condemned. Then the king, when he heard these words, was so displeased within himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. The king realized he made a mistake. These men set him up. They weren't interested in him at all. They were after Daniel. Go ahead, devil, plan, plot. But the weapon form will not prosper. We standing on the word of God. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establish it may be changed. Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continue continually, he will deliver thee. I'm here to tell somebody, you have angels on assignment. My God, my God, it looked hopeless for Daniel. It looked like within a matter of moments, they would break Daniel apart and eat him for lunch. But God is on your side. The Bible says, and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. But I'm here to tell somebody, God can still turn it around. It's never too late for God. He said to Jeremiah, and he said to Abraham, is there anything too hard for God? There is nothing too hard for God, but you got to trust him. You got to lean on him. You got to put your faith in him. God will not fail you. God is going to come through. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. He can't sleep, and he is in his own palace. Daniel is sleeping among the lions. In fact, Daniel used him for a pillow and laying right up, lay right up on him all that fur. Come on, somebody. 
God will use your enemies to give you a good night's rest. Daniel laid on the line and slept on him. Use him for a pillow. My God. And watch this now. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste under the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? And there was a pause. I know it seemed like it was a whole hour. Then, then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God, glory to God. Can someone say it? My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency is found in me and also before thee o king have i done no hurt i didn't do anything wrong these men are jealous of me they lied on me they trying to destroy me they are trying to cut me down Ah, but God have sent his angel. Glory to God. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. God, glory to God. God sent his angel. I'm telling you, you have angels on assignment. You have angels on assignment. God told angel, God told Moses, my angel is going to go before you to bring you into the place that I have set apart for my people. Glory to God. The angels of God are surrounding you this very moment. You may not see them, but they are there. What about Elisha? When Elisha was surrounded and his servant was having a panic attack, Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when God opened the servant's eyes, he noticed Elisha was surrounded by the angels of God and chariots of fire. God got your back. God's got you covered. God is on your side, and you are going to survive this attack. This too shall pass in the name of Jesus. My God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. You talk about a divine reversal. That's the God I serve. He'll give you a divine reversal. The Bible says the wicked will fall in place of the righteous. That's what I'm talking about. Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces. Listen to me, good saints. God said, touch my anointed, touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm, because God will jack somebody up. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree. Ah, he's Johnny come lately. He said, I make a decree, but God knows how to change even the laws of the land. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Daniel survived. Why did Daniel survive? Why did Daniel overcome? Because we have angels on assignment. God have angels assigned to you to protect you, to watch over you, to keep you, to block the plans of the enemy. He will give his angels charge over thee. They will keep thee in all thy ways, lest thou dash 
cast thy foot against a stone. That's in the book of Psalms 91. You got angels on assignment. God have angels assigned to you because you are washed in the blood of the Lamb. You have been washed in the blood of Jesus. You have surrendered your life to Jesus. And as a result, God have angels on assignment to watch over you, saints. You are not in this by yourself. You are not alone. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the whole host of angels of heaven on your side. You got to win. That's why the lions couldn't eat Daniel. That's why the fire couldn't burn Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are angels on assignment over your life. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He loves you this morning. He wants to turn your mess into a miracle. He's reaching out to you with arms wide open. He is calling you to himself. I surrender. He wants to forgive you. He loves you so much. He's calling you right now. And without any further hesitation and in reverence to God, I want you to bow your head and pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I've messed up terribly, but I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. I'm asking you to wash me in your blood. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross for me. They buried you in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you are coming again. From this day, Master, I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and His Son, Jesus Christ. If you prayed that prayer, with me and meant it with all of your heart, let me be the first to say to you, welcome into the family of God. Welcome into the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God and I'm asking you to type below the video right now and let us know I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. We have a booklet for you, it's called First Steps in a New Direction. We created this booklet to just help guide you in your journey as a new Christian because as a child of God just how in the natural when a baby is born they have to eat natural food so they can grow well as a child of God you need to read the word of God it is food to your spirit man it'll help you grow it'll help renew your mind it will help guide you and we encourage you to begin reading the gospel of the book of John we have we have several free translations of the Bible with our ministry app. If you were to download our ministry app, we encourage you to take advantage of those free translations of the Bible. Begin reading the Gospel of John in a translation that makes sense to you. Read that daily. Read, start with the book of John. It will help you tremendously. And we encourage you to pray. Pray simply talking to God. You belong to him. He lives in you now. And he will be with you every day for the rest of your life. Talk to him. And when you end that prayer, say, in Jesus' name we pray. Welcome into the family of God. I tell you what, heaven is throwing a party right now because you have committed your life to Jesus. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are preaching the gospel. This is the most important work on the face of the earth. So I'm asking you, don't just watch, don't just eat the word up and enjoy it,
but support the work of God. And many of you are, but I'm just saying, we need you more than ever to continue giving. Don't pull back. This ain't the time to pull back. Souls are being saved. Sick bodies are being healed. Marriages are being restored. Broken lives are being restored. To give and support the work of God, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry Cash App account. The ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget me and Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you so much. We'll never take you for granted. God bless you. We invite you to join our new church, Miracle Healing Center, on Sundays at 10 a.m. at the Cockrell Middle School in McKinney, Texas, with Pastor Sean and Amy Pinder. We welcome people of all ages and backgrounds to come and experience God's love and power, as well as join us as we fulfill the Great Commission, preaching the gospel to the lost and demonstrating God's power. Plan your visit today. Visit MiracleHealingCenter.net. We can't wait to meet you. From the author of Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks comes an inspiring new book about living an undefeated life through Christ. The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Combining biblical insight and real-world experience, Pastor Sean Pinner unpacks practical truths and encouragements that will prepare you for your next battle and help you win the one you are currently in. Somebody shout! The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory! Warfare is an inevitable aspect of any Christian life, but the fight you face does not have to destroy you. You cannot avoid your battles, but you can make the most of them. Learn how to approach your battles correctly and gain peace, understanding, strength, and ultimate victory. Order The Harder the Battle, The Sweeter the Victory today. Available on Amazon and all major book suppliers. Don't merely survive your battles, learn how to thrive.